Join me right now on Kumite TV is the silent assassin of the UFC welterweight division, Vicente Luque. What's going on, Vicente? Hey, what's up, man? It's all going good. Recently, I saw you in the corner of Gilbert Burns at UFC Fort Lauderdale. He had a great performance. What did you think of his performance? Man, he went there, executed the plan as we as we had talked about. And, you know, I've, I see every single fight of him, evolution. He's evolving. He's learning how to put impose his game every single time. I mean, you know, he has grown so much in striking. But now he understands that, yeah, he has great striking. He can go out there, outstrike the guy, but still take him to the ground. Where is his strong point and, and submit him? And that's what he did in this fight. I think he, he had the perfect game plan. He went in there, executed it. He was perfect physically. He had a great camp, so it, it all showed in the fight. How important has he been as a training partner for you coming up in the game? You know, it, he has been, you know, a big part of that, a big part of my evolution as well. You know, I'm a striker. He always helps me out on the ground part. You know, he, he gets my ground game, my grappling game on point for me to go out there and do what I do. And I try to do the same thing with him, so when, whatever I can help him with my with my striking and helping out with his striking you know i try to sharpen him up and it definitely like when we started working together and we we before even we were friends we already had like some kind of like we knew that we complimented each other so we became friends and then we started training even more together and helping out each other he always corners me i always corner him and it just has has been working you know it's it's a good thing that we have going yeah, it must be a beautiful thing to have like those two different worlds clash and develop each other at the same time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you got two high level guys of different things, but they're willing to train together and they're willing to, you know, share all their knowledge. They, I mean, both guys are really going to get high level at, at their weak points. And that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm trying to get high level at my weak points and he's trying to get high level at his weak points. And that's what MMA is about. I mean, being the best at everything. Now, I want to go back to 2012. Early in your career, you faced and defeated Tiago Santos, who is fighting for the light heavyweight title really soon. Does that blow your mind? It definitely does a little bit. I mean, you know, it was a big win for me, the biggest win in my career at that point. And it was a, a fight that definitely kind of got the UFC uh, the eyes on me when I was going to the Ultimate Fighter. That, that fight made a difference. They were impressed that I had a win over Thiago. And, you know, now I see him fighting for the light heavyweight title. It's crazy. I mean, he, he's such a big guy. Back in the day, he was really big for 170, but he used to fight 170. So he was big, but not as big as he is now. So it's, it's pretty crazy. What do you think are his chances against John Jones? You know, I think he brings a really different style. I think he's going to, if he goes in and does what he usually does, I think he has good chances of, of getting a surprise knockout. You know, he's a dangerous guy. He hits heavy, and he puts on the pressure. If he respects too much, that's going to be a problem because everybody, whenever they face John, John Jones, I mean, you see it, it it's different. They kind of respect him or get afraid of him or, or think he's going to do something special. And you just, I mean, you got to go in there and do your thing and, and just fight the way you fight. If Tiago does that. I think that he can pull off the win. I don't think he's the favorite, but I think he, he can pull off that win. I definitely agree with you. I think that he is a wild card, and he could definitely go in there and knock out John Jones. Yeah, man. I mean, he hits hard. Let's go into your last performance. It was a fight of the year candidate. It almost seems like it was a long time ago, but it was only a few months. Three rounds of pure chaos, but it was a very impressive knockout. You got it with only six seconds left in the fight. Many believe that was your breakout fight. Do you agree? I definitely agree. I think, you know, uh, before that fight, I already was showing kind of my skills and showing that I could go in there and knock out people or submit people. But that fight showed, you know, my heart and my endurance. And, you know, I could go through a hard, hard fight and I'm still going to keep pushing till the last second. And, and that's what I, what I showed in that fight. So, you know, many people kind of like weren't sure if I was just a prospect or if I could really hang with the with the top 15. And I think I proved it in that fight that I can definitely get into the top 15 and start fighting these guys. And it, it was a crazy fight. It was a big war. 
and it was all hard at the end of the fight. I knew that I, I wanted that win so bad, so I kept pushing till the last second, and it came with six seconds, but the, the knockout finally came. You both took a lot of damage in that fight. How did you feel physically a few days after? You know, the next day was really, like, was not was not so good. I was happy I had won the fight, but I was not feeling good at all. I mean, a lot of pain in the whole body. Not only, like, from the shots, but also from the effort, you know. We put a lot of strength in that fight. You waste a lot of energy. So the whole body feels really tired after that. The next two days, I was really feeling, like, sore and, and kind of, like, you know, in pain. But I recovered fast, so maybe... Five days after the fight, I was good to go, and I already started lightly getting into back to training. And you know, first coming into recovery and, and coming slow into training, but I was feeling good already after five days. You got married not too long after that Barbarino fight in Phoenix. How did the wedding photos come out? They come out good because I, I have good recovery, man. So you know, it was about uh, it was a month difference. So I fought. On February 17th, I got married March 16th, so I had a month. My face was all looking good. I was good for the pictures. No problem with that. <laughs> so the wifey wasn't, you know, she wasn't worried too much. No, she wasn't. She wasn't. Just, she was during the fight, but after that, she was happy with the win, and then she saw that I was recovering, so she wasn't worried anymore. She, she was all good. Yeah, after that, you also cracked the top 15 in the rankings. Did that take longer than you expected? You know, uh, I definitely wanted to be there up there before, but I, at the same time, I think uh, everything happens at the right moment. And I think right now, you know, I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of fights in the UFC. I, I have a good momentum. So I, I believe it's the right moment. It was the right moment for me to be ranked. It's the right moment for me to be fighting a guy that is uh, one of that used to be one of the top guys and is still ranked on the on the top 15. So you know. I definitely wanted it before, but I also understand that the timing is the timing that comes, and I'm ready for, for what's going to come next. Well, what's coming next is Neil Magny at UFC Rochester. You mentioned his name after your last fight, but you also mentioned that you wanted a top 10 guy. Did you expect another contender other than Magny? You know, I was ready to take anybody that wanted a fight, you know, uh, anybody in the top 15, I was I was excited to fight for. So it wasn't. I obviously I won a top 10, but if I don't get a top 10, no problem. I'll still fight, uh, you know, somebody that is not a uh, top 10, but is in the top 15. So I, I got that opponent. I got Neil Magny, and it's it's a fight I like a lot. You know, he has wins over guys like Carlos Condit, like you know uh, many other guys that have big names. So definitely, it's a fight that interests me a lot and. I think I can go out there and put an exciting fight for the fans. Were there any other guys in the top 15 that were offered this fight but did not want to take the fight? Because I believe that you are a guy that's coming up that nobody wants to fight. You know, uh, I, I don't really know, like, in this fight, if, if that happened. What I know is, like, Neil Magny wanted to fight in the Rochester card. I wanted to fight the top 15. So, you know, but I, I was looking forward to fight June or July. And they let me know, like, there is Neil Magny. He wants to fight in Rochester in May, May 18th. Do you want that fight? I said, definitely. I'm ready. Uh, let's get ready for this fight, and, and I'll take it. No problem. So, you know, I think it's kind of like we, we met halfway. He chose the venue, the date, and I chose, you know, getting a top 15 opponent and fighting Neil Magny. So, for me, it's all good. I'm ready to go, and I'm excited for this. Preparing for Magny, he's tall, he's long. Is this similar to when you took on Jalen Turner, or is Magny totally different? I think it's similar in some ways, especially in the length. You know, Jalen was a tall guy. He was a very, really good striker, really technical, and knew how to use his range. So I take a lot from that fight. I, I definitely like, kind of like had that fight. It was almost like a practice for Magny now, but. At the same time, they have different styles. So Magny is, is orthodox. He's not a southpaw. And, you know, he also likes to grapple. So basically, like, I'll, I've been training with a lot of guys that have that, that reach and have know how to use the distance and with a lot of grapplers and, and wrestlers so that I'm ready all around and I can impose my will in there. Who are some of the guys that you kind of work with closely to prepare for Magny's, you know, reach and his height? 
Yeah, two guys. So I, I've been training here at Hard Knocks. Two guys that really have helped me out a lot were is Jason Jackson. He has been helping me a lot. And Keman. Keman is a he's a striker from Glory. And you know the kid is really skilled. He's tall. He's has a long reach and knows how to use that reach. So he has been helping me a lot for this. Hard Knocks 365. You guys are on a tear. It's crazy that. The, the, the names that you guys have, not just from the UFC, but Bellator won championship. Which coach there do you believe has altered your game more overall? You know, all the coaches are really, like, really high-level coaches. You have Greg, you have Kami on the wrestling, and you have, you know, Henry on the striking. The guy that I have worked the longest and is the guy that definitely has mostly influenced my game has to be Henry Hoof. You know, whenever I'm – so I won't have my camps always over here. Sometimes I have them in Brazil. And no matter where I am, Henry is always a part of my camp. I send him videos. He talks to my coaches back in Brazil. So definitely he's a guy that has always been looking out for me and trying to improve my game wherever he can. How many fights do you think you're away from a title shot or at least a number one contender fight? It's hard to it's hard to say. I mean, now that I'm fighting on the top fifteen, I think you know it's I'm definitely closer to that. But it's 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 really hard to call how many fights. I think that the main thing is I have to keep doing what I'm doing, keep winning the way I win. I think my fighting style is the key for me to get to that top spot. You know, I'm, I know fans enjoy my fighting style. I know the UFC enjoys my fighting style. So if I keep going out there doing what I do and, and getting those wins. In the fashion I get, I know it's it's not going to take long. On the same night you fight, the main event is Rafael Dos Anjos versus Kevin Lee. Do you agree with having a lightweight face the number three guy in the division? Should Didn't you want that fight? Oh, I definitely wanted that fight, man. And either one, I would fight either one of them. But, you know, I understand that Kevin Lee is coming. He was a, he was a high-ranked. Uh, lightweight and now he's coming up just like Pettis also was coming up and fighting Thompson so you know this is the game now it, it has changed and it's about you know uh, who's on you know showing up more and who's talking more and who's in Twitter and I understand that you know I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna be part of that I believe in getting into the cage and talking with my hands and showing what I can do and I'm gonna be faithful to what I am but at the same time I don't get mad at at how things go I just believe I have to adapt and keep going and and reaching my space in there and you know Kevin Lee gets this fight I think I think it's an interesting fight and definitely you know I will be aiming one of these two guys whoever wins or whoever loses if they are looking for a fight I'll be available after that you said you rather do talking the talking with your hands the biggest talker in your division is Colby Covington what are your thoughts on, you know, the trash talking? Does it go too far? You know, a lot of people saying that uh, it has gone too far now. I definitely think it has gone too far, but, you know, for me, it's really hard for me to take that guy serious. I don't take it serious. I think he, you know, he clearly tries to sell, you know, his fight and try to sell he the person he is. And he doesn't care if, you know, if he has people that hate him because at the end of the day, people that hate him are still going to pay to watch him get beat up. So I think that's kind of his tactics. I don't give much attention to that. I just, like, I look at him as, as another guy in the, in the welterweight division that I definitely want to face and definitely want to fight because he's up there and, and he used to be the interim champion. So uh, I just look at him as another guy that I can fight. All right. Well, being from Brazil and spending a lot of time in the United States, it probably exposes you to many different types of, music right from all the different fighters that you meet what is in your playlist what do you like to listen to you know to prepare yourself for training or for your fight you know i'm the kind of guy that listens to all kind of different music back in brazil uh we have a cuban wrestling coach so when it's when it's the wrestling day training we listen a lot to reggaeton so that he listens to it a lot in cuban and so he brought it back to brazil and we listen to a lot of that. I think it's cool. And usually I just listen to some hip-hop or rap, things like that. But I, I, I literally listen to everything for training. I think rap and hip-hop are, are the ones that kind of give me that mood for, for fight. 
Alright man, May 18th, UFC on ESPN Plus 10, Rochester, New York. Thank you for this day for your time and uh, good luck to you, man. Thank you, man, and let's do it.